Good evening. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Egypt. In the Ummah, the Islamic community, it is said, there is only one nation. All the rest are tribes. Egypt. The Caliphate of Cairo. Egypt. For 5,000 years of very careful governance. Egypt. In these last hours, we've seen a clash between visions of Egypt's future, perhaps the future of the Ummah itself. Egypt is educated, Egypt is sophisticated, Egypt is in great distress. Mary Kissel of the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of WSJ.com's Opinion Journal each day at 1 p.m. joins me. Mary, a very good evening to you. You've been done very careful reporting about Egypt this week. There's a sense of crisis in Egypt. Would you characterize the American reaction so far as guarded, as frightened, as surprised? Is there a word that describes it, Mary? I think confused would describe it best, John. We go to someone who helps Mary on her show and me on my show a lot. This is Sam Tadros, Samuel Tadros. His new book is Motherland Lost, The Egyptian and Coptic Quest for Modernity, published recently by the Hoover Institution Press. Mary and I speak with Sam regularly. He is in the United States, but he's in close contact with his compatriots he is an Egyptian, and the crisis right now is obvious on the TV screen. It's obvious on the video. The uh, corpses are wrapped in white to be buried immediately. The death count continues to climb. There is an emergency throughout Egypt. It's not just Cairo. It's not just Tahrir Square anymore. It's 14, maybe more provinces of Egypt, including the Sinai, which is a snake pit of competing gangs and drug lords and gun runners and Al-Qaeda itself. Sam, a very good evening to you. What is fresh is not Cairo today. The violence continues, the confrontation, the military in the street. What is fresh is remarks by the President of the United States. Mr. Obama, very much chastising the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, General Sisi himself, for the violence in these last 24 hours. How is Mr. Obama's remark today heard in Cairo? Can you speculate for us? How do the young people hear it especially, Sam? Good evening to you. We'll, we'll, listen. Sam, you're coming in and out. We'll dial you again as we talk because the connection was not good. Mary, when we get Sam back on the line, what was fresh to me today about the president's remarks is after many weeks of the president not or avoiding the topic of coup, whether it was a coup, it looks like the Obama administration has decided to jump on the side of it was a coup and the military is now uh, cracking down in a, in, a, in a police state fashion. Did you hear it that way? Uh, well, I think the Obama administration is trying to walk a very tough line here, John, because on the one hand, we have very, very limited leverage. Uh, that $1.3 billion in annual uh, military aid that we give to Egypt is is one of the only levers that we have over that country, and it's not a big one at that. Uh, and, and I refer to that because that's the reason why the president has and formally designated what happened to Mohamed Morsi and the Brotherhood government as a coup. On the other hand, politically, it's becoming untenable for the president to support what's going on right now. And that's why you saw such a strong statement today, uh, strongly condemning uh, the steps that have been taken, deploring violence against citizens, opposing the pursuit of martial law. Effectively, what you're, what you're, trying, what you're seeing here, I think, is a, a, is a steering effort from the White House to say, please, please, please don't do this because you're going to put us in a corner that we just can't get out of. I believe we have Mr. Tadros back on the line. Sam, how do the young people hear the president's statements today? Mary's characterized them very carefully here in political terms from the United States point of view, but how is it heard translated into the Arabic in social media? Are you there, Sam? Yes, good evening, John. Can you hear me now? Yes, fine. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think there, there was a recent poll in, in done conducted in Egypt that showed that the level of support to the United States at the moment in Egypt is less than 1% or is in the 1% range. This shows how the U.S. has alienated its traditional allies without actually winning any new friends in the country. And Mr. Obama's statement today, which was very careful in both blaming the 
the Brotherhood for its failures in governance and um, attacking the military, or at least condemning the military's actions, has won him very little favor in Egypt. Both sides are unsatisfied by the American reaction. The Islamists are blaming the United States for not taking a stronger reaction, for not uh, standing, for not calling it a coup and cutting the aid, while the military and its supporters are unhappy with what they see as U.S. misunderstanding of the situation in Egypt. Sam, we've just put an editorial up on uh, WSJ.com e- effectively arguing that Mr. Obama should should strongly state uh, American values, really their universal values of um, basic freedoms, and, and just to continue to do that. In other words, not to take sides. Do you agree with that? I think it's important that the U.S. stands by its values. It, it, it was very problematic. I mean, one of the main reasons why the U.S. is now unfavorably viewed by some of its traditional friends and allies in the region is that, that it failed completely in condemning Mr. Norsi's violations of uh, during his years, uh, one year as uh, president of Egypt. So it's very important that the U.S. would stand by its values. We, we must remember that a weak U.S. Uh, uh, perceived weak U.S. reaction in the region, a U.S. that is disengaged and not interested in actually uh, directing or at least indicating how it views the future of the region, allows other players, both allies and spouses, to act on their own, be it Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, or Turkey, or even Iran. So everyone now realizes that without the U.S. being engaged in the region, in the region they can dictate the policy that they want and, and drive it on their own. I want to point to one detail that is difficult to interpret this far away, Sam. The burning of the churches. Why? Is that the Muslim Brotherhood? Is that the mob? Is that the police standing back and letting it happen? Is that a provocation? How to read that? It's, it's the three reasons you indicated. First, there has been a very strong level of incitement by the Muslim Brotherhood, accusing Christians of being behind the coup, accusing them of being the main force that drove President Morsi outside of power. This level of incitement, we've seen it in terms of chants, slogans being written on church walls, accusations of Tawadros the dog, referring to the Coptic Pope. So this level of incitement has certainly helped. It's also important to note that this uh, plays into already existing sectarian hatreds that have been brewing in Egypt for the past uh, couple of decades. So this is not uh, operating in a vacuum. The third uh, element you mentioned is, of course, that the police has always proved unwilling and incapable of actually protecting the churches. Sam, you've written extensively about why democracy has never developed in in Egypt, why they don't have a liberal elite. Uh, Do you see any indication that General Sisi, the the, the new strongman, the new Mubarak, has any kind of instinct to quell these mobs, to promote the kind of uh, at least coexistence uh, between these various groups that you speak of? Um, unlikely, both in terms of his own views of the world and uh, the likely uh, political scenarios that he's calculating at the moment. Put simply, today there's a grand coalition that has been built against the Brotherhood. It includes everyone from the military, the Salafis, the cops, the old remnants of the Mubarak regime. Everyone is standing together in, uh, in front of the Brotherhood. Such coalitions are unlikely to continue. What will happen in the future is that this grand coalition will collapse and that uh, a new core will emerge that will be the governing formula of Egypt. This governing formula will definitely have the military, will have the traditional families. But the question for them is who to include next to them. They have in front of them three choices. Either add the Salafis, add the nationalist Nasser-like flavor, or add the liberals. Of these three, the liberals are actually the least meaningful, the least with a base in the country, so there's no reason to, to depend on them. For CCD's calculations, they add nothing to the formula outside of being a nice face to put in front of the West. Uh, Sam, right now, the news includes the fact that Britain and France have asked for an emergency session, have asked for a meeting starting Monday in the UN. When I read that headline, immediately I thought, Suez Crisis, 1956, intervention by the West. Did everybody in Cairo think the same thing, Sam? 
Well, reactions have been mixed. First, it's, it's interesting to note that the United States is not there. So two of the United States' most important allies have called for this meeting, and the United States did not. So, so uh, many people are interpreting differently in Cairo. Some of them are thinking that the United States is behind this and that they only put Britain and France in in the picture as the leaders of it try to hide behind it. Others interpret it as, no, the U.S. is backing us, and that President Obama's statement today is not going to lead to any meaningful action, and that nothing will come out of such a session. Is it a threat to the people of Egypt that the great powers are gathering around a table 57 years later? It's a, it's a threat and an opportunity for ultra-nationalist uh, discourse and euphoria. Egyptian newspapers have fabricated stories. I read one just before we talked uh, about how uh, President Putin has put in the armed forces of the Russian Federation under the command of Sisi, which is, of course, uh, to say the least, a joke if anyone takes such news seriously. But such news is being posted among Egyptians that we have the backing of the Russians with us, we can stand against this. It's, it's a reminder of this nationalist stand that Nasser had, telling the Americans and the British that you can drink from the Mediterranean Sea. If it's not enough for you, drink from the Red Sea. Sam Tadros. The book is Motherland Laws, The Egyptian and Coptic Quest for Modernity. He's at the Hudson Institute, Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal, and the host of uh, WSJ's Opinion Journal each day at 1 p.m., and you'll speak to Mr. Tadros soon enough. We do regularly here as well. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.